All right, hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. I'm named, my name is Thomas, and I do educational videos on a number of different subjects. Today we're going to go over the Tree of Life, just the most basic aspects of the Tree of Life. This is an ancient diagram that goes back to at least ancient Egypt, and it basically is a map of our consciousness, of our faculties of consciousness. You can see it has 10 different circles or spheres, number 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. There is a thing here called the abyss, a dotted circle, and then there is a zero above the tree. Each one of them is more or less uh, of those 12 are our faculties of consciousness. We start from the bottom and move up. The tenth sphere is really about our survival, our instinct. This is our wild animal consciousness. This is our body. Uh, this is the, uh, you know, how our body keeps ourselves alive regardless of our uh, conscious input, you know, how we can breathe and our heart beats and all those different things. Now, if the tenth sphere is about the uh, wild animal consciousness, the ninth sphere, Night sphere is more about the domesticated animal. So this is really what we get when we're growing up in the home, in the domestic situation. We are young and uh, we are fresh. We are being taken care of by our caregivers. They're nurturing us and we become devoted to them. We stare at them. Uh, and we, because we're fascinated by the most mundane things, we have heightened receptivity or what you call mediumistic trance. So we take that heightened receptivity and then we begin to uh, imitate our caregivers, uh, their various actions and movements. We imitate and we repeat, we, uh, we practice and then until we learn it. And then once we learn it, we memorize it and it goes back into the body. So the night sphere is about imitation and learning through heightened receptivity. Then uh, if the A sphere, if the night sphere is domestic sphere, the A sphere is really the public sphere. This is what we get when we move out into the public space. Uh, when we go to school, when we go to church, when we go to the rec center or when we go to the grocery store, uh, then we're encounter we encounter the establishment, the, in the institutions, the powers that be, the expert opinion, the common sense the consensus worldview. These are all the things that we, we encounter that influence our belief systems and our logical faculties, especially our, our most elementary logical faculties, taking things apart and putting them uh, into categories. And uh, unfortunately, the A sphere is also a trickster, so it can also be telling us lies as, along with the truth, the establishment. And this is where all the resources are located. So we have to kind of get into the A sphere in order to gain resources and also reputation or uh, status in the society. Uh, but a lot of times it goes directly against our own better judgment, uh, things that we see right in front of our face. It's kind of like an emperor wears no clothes situation um, where we, uh, they're telling us uh, everybody believes a certain thing, but we see right in front of our face that it's not true. We have to appease the situation may, basically by giving lip service or minimal compliance to the A sphere while moving on to the rest of the higher spheres. But uh, we can get trapped in here if we invert our logical faculties and our belief systems to accommodate the A-sphere, and that causes us to get trapped. So we just really give it lip service and continue on. We move over to the seventh sphere, where the A-sphere is about the... Um, the real world, the seventh sphere is the imaginary world. So the seventh sphere is what we imagine the A sphere could be like without all of the, uh, you know, all of the, uh, the fakery and all of the tricksterism. Uh, we also, have, in addition to imagination, we have our intuition. We're able to tune in to uh, ask ourselves and then go into our heart and, and get answers to questions like, how can I make this better? We get an answer, but it has to be verified because we may not be translating it correctly. We also have in, uh, inspiration, being able to follow uh, our role models and uh, do stand on their shoulders. We also have our creative spark and our pleasure principle. So all this adds up into putting things together that are pleasing and uh, new and original, um, including our higher calling for the world, uh, what we basically feel like what is our purpose here on earth, not to be a cog in the machine, but to be uh, ourselves, the best version of ourselves. And this also inspires us to move up the tree to the sixth sphere, which is our next faculty in line. This is our free will faculty. If this were a map, it would say, you are here. 
And this is our free will, our ability to pay attention and our ability to make decisions. We find ourselves normally paying attention down the tree toward our, the 8th, ninth, and 10th sphere. But uh, given that we have a decision-making ability at, at our free will faculty, we can turn ourselves around and choose to pay attention to the higher aspects of ourselves uh, up the tree. Unfortunately, this requires some courage because now we're kind of looking into the unknown because these are not widely open, ex accessed yet, where these are, this is our comfort zone. So we have to pull away our attention from our comfort zone and point it at the next sphere in line, which is the fifth. Uh, this is really our sense of justice or sense of fairness or right and wrong. You can think of this as like a mirror right here. This is our karma. As you sow, so shall you reap. Cause and effect. Uh, what comes around goes around. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Karma is grading us basically on our ability, uh, our violence, our waste, and our violation. So if we put violence in, we get violence out. If we put waste in, we, put, we get waste out. Instead of complaining about how we're so unlucky and that we get all these violent results, what we can do is, if we're paying attention is use our karma as our teacher to help us fine tune our actions to eliminate our, the karma that we create through violence, waste, and violation. Thereby karma actually becomes our protector because we are immune. If we do not put the violence in, we do not get it back out. Um, and so if we can learn through our karma to clean up our actions, then we become spiritually immune. But first we have to deal with our past life karma, which we do through uh, self-sacrifice, disciplined self-sacrifice. So we have to clean up our karmic actions before we get to that point. Now, uh, we can also apply our attention then again to the fourth sphere. Uh, the counterpart of the fifth sphere, where the fifth sphere is about the enforcement of the natural law and order of things. The fourth sphere is about the articulation of that natural law and order, which comes in the form of cosmologies and the ancient holy books and the theories of everything in modern times. Uh, how, explains uh, basically the divine plan of life. Who is God? Where did God come from? What are we doing here? How, what is our relationship with God and nature and the laws and the ethical laws and the physical laws? And all this is usually written up in a cosmology. We've usually studied one of these cosmologies growing up, usually the Bible or the Torah or the Quran or something like that. But through the synthesis of the fourth sphere, we are advised to study as many of these as we can and then again use our intuition and take all of the studies that we've done up to that time and figure out how to put them together and to make a divine plan for our life uh, that makes sense to us. Again, we have to uh, verify our intuitions because we may not be translating them correctly. But we have to get to a certain level just in order to make those decisions or to make that uh, intuition. Um, we have to do our homework first. So study many cosmologies and then go within. Okay, if we apply our attention then to the, the uh, abyss, the abyss corresponds to our uh, psychic powers. And this is triggered by an omen or a coincidence, or something that is very improbable, a recurring name or number or theme, uh, a deja vu, or something that's just like way different than what you, what you would expect. And that is a trigger for our attention to recognize that this is something important to be paying attention to. And that is our psychic receptivity, the first part of our psychic powers. The second part is our psychic a heat, which is our ability to act upon the omen. The omen will usually imply an action uh, that if we take that, again, we're stepping out into the unknown, so it requires courage, but this will then trigger uh, the, you know, kind of rewards of that, um, of that omen. Okay, then three, two, and one are at the top of the tree. These are our divine faculties within. Omnipotence, all-powerful, is three. Two is omniscience, all-knowing. One is omni omnipresence, all-present, all at once, eternally. The three is, you know, omnipotence, all-powerful. This is basically the ability to fulfill our higher calling, which uh, is which we get through tapping into sound synchronization, particularly mantra, chanting different lover letters of the alphabet in the proper combinations uh, repetitively that frees up, uh, that 
allows us to access all of our different spheres, basically, to open them up, makes it much easier. And so through three, uh, through disciplined uh, chanting and uh, so, uh, sound synchronization, we're able to really fulfill our mission that we declared down here. Okay, the second sphere, omniscience, all all-knowing or wisdom. This is the ability to solve problems. We're able to do this not only through an oracle where we ask questions of like a tarot deck or the I Ching and we get the answers that again have to be verified, but also through our own meditative prowess if we're able to kind of shut our mind down to the point that our mind becomes completely calm. When our mind is calm, it becomes transparent. We can see right through it. When we see through the mind, we see to the center of our mind, to our higher self at the center, our super conscious. That is really here. And so what we're doing here is we're seeing the image of our higher self. And that image itself is the solution to the problem. Okay? And so uh, not, o not only here at one, not only are we able to see through our mind, but we're able to be at the center at the higher self in our mind. So this is a merging with the higher self. And this merging entails unification because when we are at our deepest center, we are also at the deepest center of everything else. Everything has the same center. And so when we get to our center, we are actually everywhere or omnipresent. So this is the whole universe that we are, we are occupying. And if the first sphere is about the whole universe, the zero sphere is about the nothingness. This is about n not the universe. It's not part of the universe. It's nothingness or emptiness or a mystery. And this that happens um, as not part of the universe, but it is part of the creator. So the zero sphere is not in the universe, but it's part of the creator. It's the part of the creator that the creator reserves for itself. And so this is uh, very powerful, but we only can access this through the creator uh, and only indirectly. Okay, so those are the 12 different basic aspects of the tree. What you should do is try to memorize just a little bit about each sphere, memorize the diagram, how it fits together, and eventually your, your subconscious mind will put it all together and it'll be fluent. You, you'll be fluent with it and you'll be able to uh, use it in your own life to prioritize things, to organize things, to remember things, and really just a lot of other uh, great benefits that you can get from using the tree of life. Okay, we'll be uh, presenting each one of these uh, different 144 minor aspects here coming up, and uh, but refer to this video if you you know need to, to get uh, kind of like an up. Um, you know, to be able to remember everything and just to kind of get a booster. All right. I uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you very much.